Seems Pokemon have managed to blow everyone's expectations once again with the announcement of not black and white remakes, not Pokemon Let's Go 2, not even Pokemon Legends Celebi or Kyurem, but an entirely unexpected new entry in the Legends series. So here's everything you need to know about the mysterious new upcoming game known as Pokemon Legends ZA. Let's start with that most peculiar name. It's clearly meant to remind people of the third version game that never happened, Pokemon Z. But why the extra hyphen and A? Well, if you rearrange the letters, you get a nod to the whole alphabet. But more importantly, the name of a character crucial to the lore of Kalos, AZ. This old homeless looking guy is actually the old king of Kalos who became immortal 3000 years ago after firing the ultimate weapon that almost destroyed the whole region and he since roamed the land searching for his beloved Floette. Meaning, he would have been alive even in a game set in the past like this one. Now, the Z in the logo is pretty obviously meant to remind you of Zygarde, the legendary Pokemon that would have been on the cover of Z, but never got its spotlight. Well, at least not in its home region, because we did get Zygarde's complete form in Alola for some reason. But the A in the logo is what's really interesting to me, because many people have caught on to the fact that it kinda looks like the ultimate weapon. I couldn't help but notice this letter didn't quite look like an A at all though, and a bit more like the Greek letter Lambda, which is used in science to indicate wavelengths. There's definitely gotta be some deeper meaning behind that, but wavelengths could have to do with a lot of different things, like time travel, which might also play a big factor in these games. But first, I want to clear something up, since I've seen a lot of people thinking this announcement means that Game Freak are skipping the Gen 5 remakes, but I believe the black and white remakes are even more likely to be coming sometime in the future now, since they better fit with the usual Game Freak release schedule of a remake coming out every other generation, meaning they were always more likely to come out after Gen 10. With that said, let's get back into Pokemon Legends ZA, which as I mentioned seems to be set in the past of Kalos, but more specifically it seems this entire game will take place in a single city, and that is of course, Lumios. This one line from a Nintendo tweet has been making some fans lose their minds wondering how an entire game could possibly take place in just one city. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of amazing games out there set in a single location. However, I can understand for Pokemon fans specifically why this could be a bit shocking, since most of us are used to cities looking like this. I mean, even some of the bigger cities like the original Lumios from Pokemon X and Y, you could probably explore to its entirety in like one to two hours tops. But the Lumios in this new Legends game appears to be much, much bigger than any city we've ever had in Pokemon actually. There may even be more than one version of this Lumios, depending on how you interpret the trailer, but we'll get deeper into that later. For now, I want to clarify the details we do know about the setting for this game, Lumio City of the Past. When I say past, you might be thinking ancient past like in Legends Arceus, but in reality those games only took place about 150 years before the main Sinnoh titles, and it seems this new game may take place around the same time period, except in Kalos, of course, which is based on France. Judging by the architectural style of the building seen during the first few seconds of the trailer, this Kalos looks pretty reminiscent to, pardon my French, but The Belle Epoque, which translates to The Beautiful Era, a period in French history known for regional peace, economic prosperity, colonial expansion, and many technological and cultural innovations, perhaps most exemplified by the construction of the Eiffel Tower happening during this time. Now, according to the official Pokemon Legends website, this latest installment takes place in a Lumio city that's being redeveloped into a place that belongs to both people and Pokemon. As we know in the present day, Pokemon X and Y, people and Pokemon most definitely coexist in peace. So it appears this game will take place in the past, just not that long ago in the past which may come as a disappointment to some fans that wanted to see a Pokemon Legends game based on the War of Kalos. But throughout the trailer, we see another version of Lumios that's almost like a virtual reality or digital cyberpunk space, and this has led to some varying theories, with the most likely being that this virtual reality looking version of Lumios simply represents the present day Lumios found in Pokemon X and Y, 
Like it's literally a blueprint of what the developers imagined the city could become in the future. But to me, the transition between this futuristic and traditional style maps make me wonder if both might actually appear in the game. Prior to the trailer and at the beginning of the Pokemon Presents, Unknown were heavily featured in these transition animations. At first, everyone expected they were teasing a new Johto project, but now that we got Legends ZA revealed, I wonder if the Unknown might have had another reason for appearing. You see, these Pokemon have always been shrouded in mystery, but they often appear in the weirdest of places, like that hyper meta cutscene in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Some people see Unknown as sort of keepers of the universe, being able to warp reality, create their own dimensions, and often appearing alongside Arceus, so all these time travel shenanigans make me wonder what role Unknown might play in this new Legends game. Like maybe we can travel between past and future versions of Lumios. Taking a closer look at the map we can see, it's kind of separated into five sections, each with a circular dome. In the original games, these were five plazas that connected the many streets and alleys of Lumios, but obviously this map will be way bigger, so these five nodes could instead represent the different sections we can explore, like how the map was divided in Legends Arceus. There might even be a sixth hub zone that could essentially act as this game's version of Jubilife Village. Or the whole city could just be one big seamless open world, but considering how the last open world game went, I would actually rather they separate the sections. Either way, if you overlay both maps, they seem almost identical, with the only big difference being those circles I mentioned. In the old school looking map, they just look like domes, but in the blueprint, these circles seem to contain different types of arenas inside. It's hard to tell what they might actually be, but seeing as we're playing Pokemon, I know we're all thinking the same thing. As far as it being a new Legends game though, you're probably wondering what that means in terms of gameplay. Could it be just as heavily focused on catching and filling up the decks? Or maybe this game could focus a bit more on battling? Trainer battles were one of the weakest points of the original Legends Arceus, so I would love to see Game Freak improve that aspect in this new game. Just imagine sending out your Pokemon and instead of engaging in the typical turn-based battle, you can actually control your partner in real time to dodge enemy attacks while looking for the opportunity to hit them back with your own moves. Instead of taking turns, there could be cooldowns for your moves like we've seen in many action RPGs and how long you wait before you can use a move again depends on their strength. I don't think Pokemon would ever get rid of turn-based battles in the main games, but Legends feels like a perfect opportunity for Game Freak to test the waters with new types of gameplay. Like we saw with the overworld catching in the original Legends that never made it to Scarlet and Violet. I can't be the only one that thinks the Synchro Machine introduced in the latest DLC feels like a prototype for something bigger. Maybe real-time action battles are what they've been cooking all along. As I continue to think about what this game could actually be, I kept coming back to that little description on the official site, specifically the part about an urban redevelopment, and that's when it finally clicked. What if, similar to Legends Arceus, in this game we might also be part of a team like the Survey Corps? In fact, there's this logo that keeps popping up throughout the trailer. We see it in the corner of these worksheets and once again before the virtual Lumios first appears. And I can't help but think, this is probably the logo for the company that's redeveloping Lumios. Similar to the Galaxy Expedition team from the first Legends game. But instead of documenting Pokemon, our job in this game will be to redevelop Lumios into a city where Pokemon and trainers live together. But how does that translate to gameplay? Well, I think similar to Legends Arceus, we probably rank up within the construction company. And this could be by registering Pokemon like the original, or by collecting building materials that we gather by defeating trainers, or doing side quests within the city. Ranking up unlocks more areas of the city, which means more Pokemon to catch, more side quests to complete, and more materials to gather to continue expanding and building things in Lumios. This could also explain the circles being blank in the old city maps, like players might actually get to decide what type of gym they want to build in each section. 
Just imagine how sick it would be if you can essentially create your own mini Pokemon region that friends can visit and challenge. I know it might sound a bit too ambitious, but like it literally says ambitious right there on the website. So dream big, right? To me, that's what made Pokemon Legends so unique. It completely disregarded the Pokemon formula and did its own thing, which I feel there is a lot of potential for this game to do once again and redefine what Pokemon can be. It's just really hard to tell what direction they might take from this short trailer. The one connecting thread we can pretty safely guess though is that the story will feature more ancestors of Kalos characters. I mean, with a title like that, it would be quite shocking if the man himself didn't appear. But there were so many loose ends in Kalos that could finally be answered in this game. AZ's Floet, the mythical Pokemon that were sort of just slapped randomly at the tail end of X and Y, and that damn door in the Badlands. What is in there? I have to know. I guess my only worry would be that with the game purely being set in the city of Lumios, we probably wouldn't get to explore a lot of these areas. There are so many locations in Kalos that I'd love to revisit, but we probably won't get to. With this being such a short trailer though, there are so many more questions than answers and I cannot wait to dive deeper into them with you guys. But the most important thing revealed today is that this game isn't actually coming out until 2025 which means Game Freak might actually be listening. I have absolutely no problem waiting for them. In fact, I welcome this wait if it means we'll actually get a complete polished game. Since for the next year, I can rest easy knowing Mega Evolutions are back, baby. Thank you all so much for watching and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. I've been getting back into streaming finally, so if you want to check out my Twitch channel, I'm playing a whole bunch of games over there like Pal World and Pokemon Infinite Fusion, so be sure to subscribe to stay tuned for all my future videos, and I'll catch you in the next one.